Hi, welcome back. Let's continue with our cloud journey. So far, we've been working with a single web role in our cloud service. However, if you recall our definition of cloud service, you'd remember that a cloud service can contain multiple roles. In this episode, we'll introduce another role type, worker role. As the name suggests, a worker role is a backend process to whom the web role can offload long tasks so that web roles are freed up to handle more requests more quickly. Now let's see how do we add a worker role to our cloud service. Back in Visual Studio, I will expand my cloud service project and right click on the roles and say add a new worker role project. I'll just take the default name and say add. You can see a new worker role project is added to my solution. The project contains one class, which inherits the role entry point class. If you have good memory, you might remember that we had such a class in our web role project before and we simply removed it from our project. For a web role, our binaries are deployed to IIS, and IIS is responsible to take and forward requests. So we don't necessarily need a separate role entry point per se. However, in this case, the role entry point class not only defines the entry point, the onStart method, but also the process body, the wrong method. We'll come back to these methods in the next episode. For now, we can simply think the onStart method is called when the row instance is started, and then run method is called. As you can see, this worker row is quite useless. It loops forever and prints some lines once every 10 seconds. To make the role more useful, we need to allow the role to take in some inputs and generate some outputs. Although we mentioned the web role can forward jobs to the worker role, the worker role can actually directly take input by itself. For instance, we can host a WCF service in our worker role. Here, for simplicity, I will use a HTTP listener to implement a simple web server. With the magic of camera, I've got my code written. Let me walk you through the code. I've created a HTTP listener, and I'm listening to HTTP traffic to port 8081. And then, in this loop, I'm taking in requests and I generate a fixed response whenever I receive a request. It's a very simple code. Now, before we can make this work, let's examine this line again. Here, I'm listening to port 8081, which is local to my virtual machine. By default, the virtual machine is a clapped-down environment without any external access. To allow open access to the role, we'll have to explicitly define an input endpoint to allow traffic to go to our virtual machines. Now let's see how do we define that input endpoint. First, let's take a look at our web role. I'll go back to the cloud project and double click on my web role. Then I will go to the endpoint tab. You can see for web role, there's an input endpoint at port 80 over HTTP protocol is created automatically for us. However, let's look at the worker role. Similarly, I will go to the endpoints tab. You can see by default, there's no input endpoint to our worker roles. Now let me add an endpoint. I will click on add endpoint. The name doesn't matter here. And here I'm saying, I need the input endpoint, which means it's open to public access. 
and we'll use the HTTP protocol. And here, public port, I will use 8080. And then I will forward the traffic to my private port, 8081, which matches with my code. Please note here, I have to use a different port number because I'm running on a local emulator. In a real deployment, you'll be able to use the same port. Now, because my worker role has an input endpoint defined, it's opened to internet traffic. Let's see how that works. We'll launch the solution by pressing F5. Now, our application is running. Let's try to hit our HTTP listener. I'm going to use port 8080. Remember, this is a public port we defined in our endpoint, and this is the address your end user sees. Now I press Enter. You can see my HTTP listener is serving up the stream. And we should note that the worker roles can be scaled in the same way as the web roles. So this is one way for a worker role to take in workload by directly listening to public traffic. Now let's go back to talk about how a web role can send jobs to a worker role in the same cloud service. As we've mentioned several times before, cloud service defines a security boundary. Within this boundary, the roles can communicate with each other directly. And this is done by internal endpoint. A key difference between input endpoint and the internal endpoint is that the input endpoint, which is public, is load balanced. As I just mentioned, if you have two instances of your worker role, they will be load balanced. However, if you access the internal endpoint, the traffic will not be load balanced. Instead, you are directly talking to that row instance. Now let's go back to our solution and see how we can send a job from our web role to the worker role who's running the HTTP listener at this point. I will stop the solution and open my web role and I will just go to my home controller. I will modify my about method and send a request to the HTTP listener hosted on my worker role. And once again, with the magical camera, I'm done with my code. The first problem we need to solve is to find the address of the worker role instance we want to talk to. For that, we'll use our favorite role environment class again. You can see here I'm using roles collection of my role environment class, and I'm using the role name, which is the same as my project name, to find the worker role, which is called worker role one. And for all the instances, I'm talking to the first instance, which has the index of zero. Then I will use the instance endpoints collection and find my endpoint one I just defined a moment ago. Uh, once I find this endpoint, I can construct uh, the address fairly easily. I just add HTTP slash slash and the endpoint dot IP endpoint. So now I got the address of this particular row instance I want to talk to. Remember, this request is not load balanced. I'm talking to a specific virtual machine. And the communication part is easy. I just create a new web client. I will just request a message from the address. Before we can try this out, because we'll be using an internal endpoint this time, we'll change our worker role definition to change the input endpoint into internal endpoint. I will double click on my worker role, and I will change endpoint one from input, which is public, to the internal, which is private to my cloud service. I'll save the changes and I will launch the application. Now the application is running again. I'm going to click on the About link. And remember, 
The about link will trigger the about method, which will in turn send a request to the HTTP listener of the workable instance. I'll click on about. And sure enough, the request was sent and handled by the workable instance. So far, we've seen two different ways how a worker row can take in some workloads. There are many options. The first group of options is direct communication. Like we just showed in the example, we used public endpoint that allows public traffic to go directly to our row. We also used internal endpoint, which is to allow the row instances in the same cloud service to talk to a particular row instance. And there's another endpoint type, instance input endpoint. Instance input endpoint is a public endpoint with a port range. And by selecting different ports on that range, you can address different instances of a row. To better explain the three types of endpoints, let's see a little animation. This is what we are familiar with. We have a row who has two instances. They are put behind a load balancer who expose a public endpoint for public traffic. And we've also seen the internal endpoint, which is not load balanced, but allow other row instances to directly talk to a row instance. And we just mentioned the instance input endpoint. The instance input point is the public endpoint, but with the port range. By selecting different port, you can directly talk to different instances of a row. For example, if my input endpoint has the port range of 80 and 81, by selecting the first port, port 80, I can go to the first instance, and by select the second port, 81, I can go to the second instance. And there are actually many other options for row communications. Here, I'll just let the animation run without further explanation. I hope we can touch on those topics in future episodes. In addition to direct communication, we can also use shared storage among our roles. For instance, we can use a database or database service to pass information back and forth. We can use Windows Azure Table Storage, which is a non-SQL storage service Windows Azure provides. We can also use the caching service, which is the distributed cache cluster that all the roles can access to. And last but not least, we can also use messaging to achieve a loosely coupled integration. For instance, we can use a Windows Azure Service Bus queue to send jobs from web role to a worker role. And this will be the topic of the next episode. In summary, today we introduced the new role type, the worker role, and we took a brief look of the role entry point class. We talked about the on start method and the run method. We are not talking about the role lifecycle yet. For now, we can simply remember when the worker role is started, first the onStart method is called, then the wrong method is called. And then we talked about the different endpoints, such as input endpoint and internal endpoint. Then we talked about other communication choices you have to send jobs back and forth. In the next episode, We'll discuss how do you send jobs from a web role to a worker role using Windows Azure Service Bus Queue. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.